is funding and investments uh, into the real estate sector. I have a presentation. I will uh, start with a brief uh, introduction and then we will move into uh, the presentation. Uh, globally, last year in 2017, we saw global capital flows of uh, close to $650 billion uh, in real estate. Uh, the big uh, countries which saw the maximum transaction volumes were US, uh, where close to 45% of the transactions happened, UK, uh, where 15% of the transactions happened, Germany, Japan, and China. This were the five uh, big uh, countries which saw the maximum transaction uh, volumes. Asia PAC uh, saw a 12% uh, increase compared to uh, 2016. The top five cities uh, in the world uh, in terms of uh, funding and investments are London, uh, Los Angeles, uh, New York, Tokyo, and uh, Paris. So what's uh, happening uh, on the real estate uh, space uh, across the country? We've been seeing uh, developers uh, sell uh, their assets uh, uh, to reduce uh, cost of capital. Uh, we have seen uh, developers wanting to uh, improve their uh, capital structures. This is uh, giving developers uh, more uh, operational uh, uh, flexibility. And we've seen many developers uh, refocus on their core markets uh, and uh, the core uh, asset classes uh, instead of uh, venturing out uh, into multiple markets and multiple uh, asset classes. All of us know that uh, the residential market over the last uh, few years uh, has been uh, uh, sluggish. Uh, we can finally see uh, uh, recovery is uh, definitely uh, visible. Uh, obviously, the residential industry is uh, struggling with uh, demonetization, RERA and GST uh, blues. End users, uh, we believe, are still fence sitters waiting uh, for uh, effective implementation of uh, RADA. And uh, um, all these fence sitters uh, are also waiting for more affordable uh, launches uh, to happen. So lack of uh, affordable options is uh, keeping uh, the buyers uh, away. And uh, demand from uh, speculators and investors have significantly uh, uh, come down or uh, disappeared. Investors, uh, with investors getting out, industries, uh, they, for the industry to revive, we need more uh, end user uh, action. Uh, there obviously, uh, there's uh, very loss, uh, less uh, pre-launches happening post uh, RERA. Uh, cash has uh, definitely come down uh, significantly in the real estate sector post uh, demonetization. Uh, with uh, equity markets giving uh, better returns uh, than the real estate sector, over the last three years, uh, we have seen a lot of flight of capital going from the real estate sector to the equity uh, sector. What are the impacts uh, of uh, uh, acts like RERA? Uh, RERA is definitely forcing developers uh, to complete their uh, projects. Uh, the challenge is uh, still most cities uh, have between 25 to 30 months of uh, unsold uh, inventory. Uh, NCR has uh, much more. Uh, there will definitely uh, be, we believe the markets will start reviving when uh, buyers see uh, uh, RERA being uh, effectively implemented and uh, with more uh, affordable projects coming in, like I said. But the good news is uh, a lot of structural drivers for recovery uh, is in place, whether it's uh, consolidation, whether it's a lot of developers uh, talking about affordable housing whether it's a uh, slowdown of uh, launches or, and a uh, small pickup in uh, sales rate, uh, some of these uh, structural drivers uh, are in place. Uh, housing finance uh, rates have definitely come down in the last uh, two and a half uh, years. Uh, and uh, effective implementation of RERA will obviously uh, lead to uh, an exodus of uh, uh, small time players uh, out of the industry, which will also revive uh, more uh, consumer confidence. One thing to be noted is uh, we talk a lot about affordable housing, uh, but uh, only less than 1.3% of the population today in the country uh, can actually afford uh, a home which is more than 82 lakhs. 
uh, which is uh, basically uh, five times uh, your 17 lakhs uh, salary. So a lot of uh, stuff is being created, but uh, whatever is being created is targeted only at the top 1.3% uh, of the entire country's uh, population. Uh, something to cheer about, uh, the share of uh, below 50 lakh uh, apartments uh, are uh, improving. Uh, consumers uh, preferring uh, uh, to buy uh, ready to move in uh, apartments uh, than under construction apartments. Previously, uh, developers used to sell 15% of their apartments uh, at the time of uh, completion. Today, uh, developers are uh, selling uh, close to 30% of their apartments at the time of uh, completion. Uh, something, one more thing to cheer about is despite uh, slow sales, the unsold uh, inventory has uh, declined over the last uh, few, uh, few uh, quarters. Uh, what's happening on the uh, overall investment uh, space? Uh, we're seeing excess uh, liquidity uh, coming uh, from globally uh, uh, global sources. Uh, today, we are seeing uh, a lot of uh, core investors. Uh, core investors are people who typically want to buy income-producing uh, assets, stabilized assets. Uh, they are willing to take uh, more, uh, more risk. A lot of opportunistic investors uh, today are also uh, changing their return expectations uh, downwards. We believe uh, there would be uh, newer asset classes uh, like uh, affordable housing, uh, student housing, uh, senior senior housing, data centers, uh, co-working, co-living, uh, new asset classes uh, emerging over the next uh, few years. Uh, co-working has uh, already become a big uh, demand driver in uh, many uh, many cities uh, for office space uh, there's a lot of liquidity coming in from um, asian uh, sovereign institutions and uh, insurance companies across uh, across the world uh, uh, some of it has started uh, coming into india also but this is just the beginning uh, this will uh, only increase going uh, forward uh, increase uh, obviously increase in capital has uh, created a premium on execution uh, capabilities. A lot more work uh, is needed to generate the same amount of uh, returns. Uh, warehousing uh, is emerging as a preferred uh, asset class. Uh, investors clearly believe in uh, the overall undersupply of this as an asset class warehousing. A uh, lot more uh, buyers uh, in the market. Uh, um, so the amount, the number of buyers have gone up, which means uh, there is more competition, uh, meaning higher prices, leading to uh, lower uh, lower yields. Uh, also, uh, more buyers mean uh, increased uh, increased alternative markets and alternative asset classes, like I mentioned before. Uh, today, people are looking uh, harder to find uh, more uh, opportunities. Uh, as uh, in core markets, uh, like the top three markets in the country, is becoming tougher to find uh, the right uh, amount of uh, uh, deals. So overall, P uh, activity uh, deal volumes have uh, gone up. Uh, more construction finance available today than before. Mm, cap rates uh, have uh, come down. Uh, thanks to uh, NCLT and uh, the bankruptcy code, uh, we believe the distressed deals uh, will uh, significantly increase. Many funds uh, are coming uh, closer to their uh, end of their fund lives, which will increase the number of uh, exits. We have a la lot more uh, active acquirers and a lot more active divestors in the market today. Uh, we have also seen return expectations uh, come down of uh, the various players. And uh, investment periods have more or less uh, been uh, stable. When we look at the real estate sector, it's uh, very important to look at the macro uh, uh, structure of uh, uh, the real estate market. Uh, today, Indian real estate sector contributes uh, close to 8% uh, uh, eight to 9% of the GDP, is uh, the third or fourth largest uh, in terms of attracting FDI, in terms of industry, it's the second largest employment generators uh, in the country. And uh, in spite of all the negativity surrounding uh, real estate, the NPAs uh, in real estate uh, are uh, just around 2% compared to sectors like uh, power, infrastructure, aviation, where it's all uh, close to 20% uh, plus uh, NPAs. 
and we all know that uh, close to 250 industries are uh, linked to the real estate uh, sector uh, obviously the banking sector can uh, do a uh, lot more uh, to help uh, the real estate sector by uh, uh, bringing in uh, a lower risk weightage uh, for the sector banking exposure is still uh, less than uh, 50 billion dollars to the real estate sector uh, ltvs uh, at 75 80% can still be uh, improved upon this will uh, create a more real estate market banks uh, still don't uh, fund land purchases this is something which can uh, be done the government can uh, obviously needs to reduce taxes so today the developer uh, pays uh, close to 27% uh, of uh, the overall sale price as uh, taxes all the customers pays around 11% so you add 27 plus 11% close to 38% goes in uh, taxes uh, we are also seeing that uh, equity uh, deals are making a big uh, comeback into the market. Uh, banks and housing finance uh, companies and NBFCs are getting more aggressive on the debt financing route. Institutions uh, are uh, open to considering uh, longer tenures uh, and uh, more uh, principal moratorium periods for loans. Uh, and uh, funds, uh, again, looking uh, more open to looking at equity financing and the land acquisition stage uh, there's also a lot more platform structure uh, level deals uh, which are happening around the country uh, at the macro level the uh, rera uh, will definitely help the sector in uh, the medium to long term short term there has uh, been a negative impact because both launches and sales have dropped uh, the government's various initiatives like uh, the smart city program housing for all program uh, what the government has been trying to do Get the first street listed uh, infrastructure initiatives like the Mumbai Delhi uh, Industrial uh, Corridor, uh, the Amritsar Calcutta Industrial Corridor, uh, FDI relaxation of the government is done. All this is uh, helped. Uh, what we have seen this government try and do in the last uh, three years, uh, I haven't seen uh, any government do uh, for a very long time. Um, uh, we have seen uh, obviously uh, corruption uh, uh, reduce, uh, not significantly, but uh, still uh, reduce better uh, uh, infrastructure initiatives all around the country and uh, uh, whatever the policy paralysis which was there before this government came in that is also kind of uh, improved so what do developers uh, need to do to get uh, this uh, high liquidity in the global and uh, asian markets obviously all these uh, people are looking at uh, the competitive position of uh, a developer within the industry uh, so the best developers today uh, have a lot of capital uh, chasing them. Uh, very important to have quality of assets. Uh, uh, obviously, capital structure needs uh, also to be healthy. These uh, funds are also looking at uh, quality and stability of uh, and um, experience of the management teams uh, in each of uh, the developers. Uh, so uh, uh, corporate governance, uh, which is uh, not a widely used term in the Indian real estate sector is catching momentum and uh, uh, developers who have uh, good corporate governance uh, are seeing good amount of uh, cash uh, chasing them uh, on the competitive side developers need to improve on execution uh, and like i said quality earlier uh, uh, try and see how they can professionalize their uh, leadership uh, good partner tie-ups uh, with vendors is uh, very important uh, developers who are focused on uh, end users uh, will do uh, better. Uh, people who have good uh, uh, broker relationships uh, uh, will also do well. And um, developers who have the ability to get the best land will do uh, well. Coming to uh, the presentation uh, for the day today.
This is uh, the context for today's uh, presentation. We look at the state of uh, the economy, a journey of investments in the Indian reality post GFC and associated trends, investments in reality in 2017, uh, key segments and insights, uh, types of funding, and uh, what's the outlook for uh, 2018. State of the economy, there's a general positive sentiment uh, about the Indian economy this year, with the International uh, Monetary Fund also suggesting a positive outlook for the economy in 2018. Uh, let us look at some of the indicators of the positive uh, sentiment uh, in the economy. According to the IMF, uh, India is the sixth largest economy globally, as well as the fourth fastest growing economy. India is uh, Brand is uh, India, the brand name is valued at uh, $2 trillion uh, by the Brand Finance Nation Brands 2017 report. World Bank's uh, projected growth rate uh, for the Indian economy this year is 7.2%, uh, which is almost equal to twice the world average, which is uh, today at 3.7%. We also uh, saw a sent, uh, positive sentiment with respect to credit rating from uh, Moody's, uh, with Moody's raising India's sovereign credit rating to BAA2 from BAA3 and changed the outlook from stable to positive. India has been uh, ranked the number one in South Asia by the World Economic Forum's uh, Global Competitive Report uh, for 2016-17. The positive sentiment indicates uh, a stable credit profile and a strong investor sentiment on the back of improving economic indicators, as well as recent game-changing uh, reforms. Uh, that along with our investments in uh, infrastructure, higher education, skill development, and uh, the technological readiness indicates a very bright uh, future for the Indian economy. The year uh, uh, started on uh, fear of uh, adverse uh, effect on economy due to demonetization 2017. But by the end of the year, it uh, proved that the fear was uh, exaggerated and the economy performed uh, better than uh, feared. On an absolute basis, uh, India's uh, economic growth trajectory may have been uh, lower recently, but it continues to remain the world's uh, fastest uh, growing uh, nation. Uh, macro indicators of uh, India, whether it's the GDP, currencies, fiscal, reveal that uh, India remains a stable economy amongst uh, its uh, peers. The Indian rupee has remained fairly stable over the last uh, few quarters, and uh, midterm appreciation is expected to, uh, in light of new government bank capitalization uh, program. At the start of 2017, uh, the year was expected to be inflationary, but it turned out uh, exactly the opposite. The 2017 uh, recording the lowest inflation numbers in the past uh, few years. Uh, GST uh, helped bring down uh, prices of many staple expenditure items and also helped maintain a low consumer inflation. In addition to stable inflation, uh, Forex reserves uh, also touched uh, new highs and fiscal deficit was also uh, uh, on uh, controllable uh, in 2017. However, uh, there is a projected uh, risk uh, uh, in terms of inflationary levels in the next few quarters, uh, increasing due to rising crude uh, prices. All these uh, factors contributed to India jumping 30 spots uh, in the ease of doing uh, business, whether it was uh, getting uh, construction permits, paying taxes, enforcing uh, contracts, uh, resolving insolvency, getting credit, protecting minority investors, uh, registering property, getting electricity connection, all these uh, helped uh, Indian uh, India improve their 30 uh, spots uh, on uh, the ease of uh, doing business. 
Next, we look at uh, the journey of investments in uh, Indian reality and associated uh, trends. India is uh, one of the top three investment destinations after US and China, according to the United uh, Nations uh, Conference on Trade and uh, Development. We've seen uh, a steady uh, rise in P investments in the past uh, four years, starting with 2013. Overall, PE investments uh, in Indian real estate uh, have almost touched uh, 44 billion uh, last year. Uh, this is overall over the last few years. The government has uh, opened up sectors like defense, civil aviation, uh, single brand uh, retail, insurance, pharma sectors to increase uh, foreign investments. A stable uh, credit profile uh, and improving economic indicators uh, have led to strong investor sentiment. And this is evident through the increasing inflow of uh, investments. In 2014, the elections uh, led to positive uh, sentiments. The total capital was much lower uh, as well, resulting in a higher percentage of foreign uh, capital uh, inflow. In 2017, the percentage of FDI showing, uh, showed a remarkable improvement over uh, 2016. Uh, this is a good example of how investor confidence has uh, increased owing to transparency due to uh, policy uh, policy reforms. There's been a 37% uh, rise in uh, FDI in real estate as compared to uh, last year. Uh, RERA and GST have a major role to play in the increased investment that has brought about increased transparency and organized uh, organization in the sector. Other government initiatives such as uh, the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, PMAVI, Housing for All and Smart Cities along with uh, increased interest spend, enabling REIT structures and relaxation in FDI norms have also led to increased uh, FDI uh, inflows. Let us have a look at some of the major deals uh, in the past uh, few years. You see uh, investors like uh, GIC, uh, CPPIB, Alliance, uh, Blackstone, Brookfield, uh, QIA, uh, Brookfield again, doing uh, large deals uh, in the country. So, at the types uh, of uh, funding, only 5% of total uh, investments uh, in the residential uh, sector over the past four years were in the form of equity, uh, while commercial and IT sector has commanded equity participation an average of 78% over the same, uh, same period. Equity FDI inflows uh, have seen an increase of 40% over uh, the last uh, three years. Investors are now becoming uh, landlords and are picking up a good quality uh, uh, income yielding assets from developers. There are two major reasons for increase in equity. Investors are willing to take uh, more risks on account of policy changes and higher transparency. Uh, commercial assets uh, were more in demand compared to the residential sector, which was passing through a period of short-term course correction. Most of the FDI in commercial and IT has uh, been through uh, have, have been through equity structures. Private equity inflows uh, in office and IT for twenty. Uh, 14 uh, to 17 uh, by TDR, 150% higher than the previous uh, seven years inflows combined. There is a clear observation that uh, equity investments uh, prefer the office sector, with the residential sector just uh, uh, seeing just 5% of total in inflows in pure, pure equity. On the other hand, uh, debt structures dominate the uh, fund inflows in the residential structure, which is the key reason as to why developers are over leveraged. This is uh, on account of the general sluggishness in the residential market and investors uh, unwilling to take the downside risk. Uh, with uh, increased transparency and regulations, uh, we expect uh, a return of equity to residential uh, markets in 2018. Another key insight uh, is that uh, except office and residential, all sectors combined added up uh, to only 30% of total investments since 2014. This indicates that there is uh, many unexplored opportunities, growth opportunities in other asset classes like uh, retail, industrial, warehousing, and uh, alternatives.
Tier 1 cities uh, of Mumbai, Bangalore and Delhi have attracted uh, maximum investment flow since 2014 on account of relatively lesser risk, presence of big branded developers with national footprint and high demand uh, and developers comfort with the city dynamics. Retail investors are increasingly focusing on uh, emerging retail destinations uh, tier 2 and 3 over metros uh, due to better growth prospects. This tier 2 and 3 cities have witnessed uh, much higher investment uh, close to uh, 6 billion, 6.1 billion dollars compared to tier 1 metros which have seen uh, 1.2 1, 1. Uh, billion from 2006 to uh, 2017. We expect new opportunities to continue in tier 2 and tier 3 uh, cities. Overall, P investments uh, in, in, in Rindin real estates have touched uh, 44 billion, uh, like I mentioned earlier in 2017, with uh, uh, three deals uh, close to crossing the billion dollar mark. Total uh, investments in the past four years are greater than the aggregate uh, investments in 10 years uh, prior to that. A uh, big uh, billion dollar deals included uh, GIC, uh, DLF, uh, CPPIB, uh, Indospace, and Brookfield, uh, Hiranandan. How the investment uh, strategies have changed pre and post uh, GFC? Uh, taking a look at the change of investments, uh, there have been multiple opportunities in the course of the past decade, including uh, more equity and debt funds, retail funds, warehousing funds, platform GVs, and uh, residential uh, funds. If you look at the outlook uh, for uh, 2018, looking forward, there are many avenues uh, in the market. Good quality warehousing and logistics uh, fueled by the introduction of GST is a new attraction among the PE players. Uh, PE is uh, private equity uh, is convinced on India's affordable housing potential, but Indian developers are yet to respond with capacity and governance for transactions to fructify. Alternative asset classes have a lot of growth potential in the coming few years. Uh, student housing, there is an unmet demand of uh, 30 to 60 percent in the 10 leading states in terms of number of students in the higher education uh, space. Senior living, the estimated uh, senior population in India currently is uh, 98 million and expected to touch 240 million by 2050. In the changing social environment uh, where families are no longer equipped to take care of their aged family members, concepts such as uh, contemporary retirement resort, resorts are becoming acceptable and popular in India, uh, but uh, the integrated uh, continuing uh, care retirement communities uh, offer uh, opportunities. Retail, by 2018, the Indian retail sector is likely to grow to a CAGR of 13% to reach uh, US uh, 950 billion and increasing participation from foreign and private players is likely to boost uh, creation of uh, retail uh, infrastructure. Uh, some of the large uh, retail uh, transactions like Blackstone investing in Alpha G Corp, uh, Blackstone uh, investing in LNT Realty, GIC investing in Shade Developers, uh, Xander and uh, APG Platform, Blackstone investing in Carnival Group, uh, or the Elante Mall. So all this uh, uh, have shown that uh, interest in retail is uh, increasing. The office side lead, leading private equity players are looking at development of offices in uh, uh, Greenfield and Brownfield also uh, completed stage uh, and uh, near to completion in partnership with leading uh, developers. How will the geographical distribution change? Uh, top three cities, Mumbai, Delhi and Bangalore versus uh, other cities. Uh, the top three cities will continue to attract majority of uh, P investments. However, uh, focus on tier two cities uh, will be uh, will increase uh, considerably considerably than uh, it is uh, now. Uh, we believe uh, there will be a growth trajectory for alternatives, uh, alternative asset classes like student housing, warehousing, uh, senior living will play a big role going forward. With the launch of uh, the first uh, REIT having taken longer than expected, we believe uh, if the REITs uh, showcase good performance. This space would be one of the most sought after 
space in Indian uh, real estate. P investment in Indian real estate uh, will uh, double in the next uh, 10 years. Uh, what we saw from 2006 to 2017, 44 billion. Uh, between 17 to 20, uh, 2020, 26, we uh, expect this to become uh, 100 billion. According to uh, a member of the PM's uh, Economic Council, if the exchange rate remains what it is today, uh, then by 2035, 20, 2040, India will be a 10 trillion economy. And uh, if the exchange rate appreciates, then India will be a 10 trillion economy before uh, 2035. We can uh, open it now for uh, questions. There's a question uh, from Kinjal Gada, who's asked, uh, where do you foresee the price for real estate in the near term and uh, long term? Uh, it again, uh, Kinjal, the uh, answer is uh, depends uh, on the asset class. Uh, we uh, believe that uh, office markets uh, in the country uh, and uh, retail, we could uh, see a capital appreciation of uh, anywhere between uh, 6 to 8% over the next uh, year on year over the next uh, two years. Uh, residential, uh, we believe, would uh, more or less uh, remain uh, where it is over the next uh, 18 months to 24 months. Uh, there's a question. Uh, do you think uh, just the noise about affordable housing is enough? Do you see uh, any of the top eight cities adding substantial numbers in terms of affordable housing? Uh, I believe uh, uh, this question has been asked by uh, Ashish. Uh, I, I believe uh, there is uh, there was a lot of noise. Uh, a lot of developers today are uh, beginning to take uh, take action on this. Uh, although in cities like uh, Mumbai, we haven't seen too many players get into it. But uh, in cities like Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, uh, Pune, the many players uh, who are getting uh, their land banks uh, ready and uh, waiting to uh, get into action on the uh, affordable housing space. How can a developer uh, start with affordable housing projects? Any uh, guidelines? This is a question being asked by Vasudev. I think uh, the most important uh, thing is uh, obviously the access to uh, land, uh, which has uh, good uh, infrastructure connectivity. Uh, I would uh, uh, recommend that uh, the right ticket size today uh, would be uh, 15 to 20 lakhs, uh, where uh, demand uh, for apartments in that range uh, is uh, infinite. There is huge amount of uh, demand. So finding those uh, would be the first step. Second is, uh, what is the kind of value engineering strategy is required to create uh, a construction cost of not more than 1400 uh, to 1600 rupees per square feet? Uh, how can you create uh, a building around that? I think that should be the second uh, second step. Another question uh, from Dr. Kishore, uh, where are the new demand coming from other than families uh, created by uh, marriages, uh, which is basically nuclearization? The answer to that is, uh, there is obviously population uh, growth, which is happening. Uh, job growth uh, co also is contributing. You spoke about uh, nuclearization. The other big trend is uh, aspirational. A person uh, who is... Uh, in a one bedroom wanting to go to a two bedroom and uh, a family in two bedroom wanting uh, a three bedroom. So those are the three, four uh, demand drivers uh, for the housing market.
any specific expectations uh, which uh, the real estate uh, sector has from the housing uh, budget uh, i think this government has done considerably enough uh, in the last uh, three four years in terms of budgets whether the first budget uh, modi opened up uh, fdi uh, he uh, reduced the uh, size of fdi from 50000 square meter to 20000 square meter next budget he uh, took off the 20000 square meter uh, range also which means uh, today fdi can come in uh, uh, any size uh the one of uh, last 10 years uh, i've been uh, uh, hearing uh, developers request for having uh, making uh, affordable housing uh, uh, giving affordable housing infrastructure uh, status uh, that was allowed uh, but again uh, in the budget last year big uh, big game changer for affordable housing industry uh, we have also uh, seen developers uh, uh, want uh, uh, atib kind of tax uh, incentive that's again been done for uh, the affordable housing industry two years back uh, people wanted more clarity on reits uh, both this have been done again in the last two uh, budgets so most of the budgets uh, since this government took over has uh, addressed uh, the real estate uh, sector i think uh, a little more uh, which can be done uh, things uh, like what i said uh, further reducing uh, this risk uh, weightage for the real estate uh, sector uh, can uh, banks uh, lend to buying uh, uh land uh, which which is not uh, currently allowed and reducing all kinds of uh, taxes for uh, like i earlier mentioned 27% uh, is uh, developers contribution and 11% is customers 38% when you buy an apartment uh, goes in uh, taxes Uh, Bhavya Gupta has asked a question. Owing to the increasing demand of cloud computing, do you think data centers will emerge as a asset class? A uh, very good uh, question. Uh, I've never seen so much of uh, demand for data centers. What I've seen in the last uh, six to nine months, clearly emerging as an alternate uh, asset class. It's not a real estate business. Uh, data centers uh, requires uh, very different uh, specifications from a regular real estate uh, building. uh we see huge amount of uh, interest today from a lot of global uh, companies as well as uh, indian companies uh, in the space good question uh vivekanand has asked a question uh does india have enough quality class a buildings to make reach successful very good question so out of the nearly 500 million uh, square feet of office stock in the country our estimate is uh, around 240 million of that 500 million square feet is uh, reitable and uh, even if half of them uh, get reited out of the 240 million which is like 120 million we believe uh, this will lead to a 18 to 20 billion dollars of uh, cash and flow uh, into the country through uh, reit so there's enough uh, stock available the answer to the question how is the real estate growth in tier 2 uh, tier 3 cities this is uh, jay prakash uh, has asked this question uh, the best cities uh, the tier 3 cities uh, will see uh, right now whatever is happening is only been uh, on the housing side uh, the cities uh, which will uh, see good growth are the cities which, which will create uh, good amount of uh, economic activity uh, like we saw uh, in ahmedabad for example uh, which has seen good economic activity uh in terms of uh, banking financial services in terms of little bit of uh, it in terms of uh, manufacturing happening in the uh, surrounding so wherever economic activity happens uh, we believe uh, real estate activity will automatically uh, start um, the only challenge uh, where what we see in tier 3 uh, cities uh, across the country especially for it companies uh, what we have heard from many of them is there's not enough uh, trained uh, experienced uh a talent uh, available for these uh, it companies in these tier 3 cities the other big challenge we have heard is uh, a lot of people uh, senior people uh, or middle level people don't want to get transferred from tier 1 cities to a tier 3 city because uh, he obviously has his family his children going to school his wife having a job he doesn't want to uh, move and that's uh, another uh, challenge which we have seen in tier 3 cities availability of quality real estate uh, again uh, is a 
is a challenge. Uh, a lot of these uh, uh, cities, uh, it's tough to find more than one or two commercial developers in each of these cities. So we have heard that that is uh, a challenge uh, from uh, many companies. What is your uh, estimates uh, on cap rates for uh, commercial properties? And uh, how do they differ in uh, different uh, situations? This is uh, Sandeep has asked this uh, question. So what typically happens, uh, what I've seen uh, in the country over the last few years is a Blackstone or GIC doing a deal. Uh, and that comes into the press and uh, suddenly everyone starts uh, benchmarking that as the rate uh, of uh, the cap rate uh, for the entire country. This is uh, a wrong way of calculating. Newspapers uh, carry a story which is uh, very number driven. Um, again, if you look at uh, a DLF uh, uh, investment of GIC, a lot of assets uh, have uh, where uh, the rentals uh, are much lower than where the market is. And those kind of factors are not, uh, uh, doesn't get reflected in a newspaper article which just says 8% and uh, that size. So one needs to kind of look at it. I personally believe uh, cap rates uh, will have to go down. Uh, more than uh, stability of the economy, I think it's got to do with uh, competition. With newer sources of capital coming in from uh, countries uh, like uh, Canada, uh, Middle East, Germany, uh, there would be more players uh, fighting for the same uh, amount of uh, uh, assets, which will, uh, that competitive pressure would uh, lead to cap rates uh, coming down. With rental yields uh, in the country generally as low as 2 to 6 percent max uh, and with appreciation almost nil, how can REITs perform uh, and give better yields to investors after accounting for operational costs of REITs? Chetan has asked this question. Uh, Chetan, uh, REITs, uh, we believe uh, initially all the REITs uh, will be in commercial. Uh, it will not uh, be in uh, residential. Commercial uh, yields are uh, obviously uh, higher than uh, the number which you mentioned, 10 to 6%, uh, closer to the 7 to 8% uh, mark. Plus, uh, uh, most of the office uh, leases have a built-in uh, escalation clause of uh, 5% uh, every year or 15% uh, every three years. That'll, that'll be a kicker. A lot of leases uh, were done at historical uh, uh, cost. So wherever leases are coming up for uh, renewals where the lease terms are ending, uh, there could be a kicker which could sometimes be more than 25-30%. So that's the other thing. And obviously, cap uh, cap rate comparison is uh, what everyone is expecting. That could also uh, have an increase uh, on uh, IRRs. By when do you think the real estate, uh, residential real estate will start attracting uh, investors? Sumit has asked this question. Sumit, uh, I, uh, it's tough to predict uh, uh, from a long-term point of view, but at least for the next two years, uh, I don't see speculators and investors uh, coming in uh, into the market. Pankaj has asked this question. Uh, I'd like to uh, you to throw some light on the encouragement of real estate sector with the execution of smart cities, especially tier two cities. Uh, good question, Pankaj. Uh, I think smart cities will only take off if uh, economic activity is uh, to uh, uh, improve in these uh, tier two, tier three cities. Uh, today, if you look at uh, a city like uh, Mumbai, which sees uh, 50, 60 uh, lakh uh, square feet of office uh, absorption, or a city like Hyderabad, which has, uh, which last year saw 60 lakh square feet of office absorption, uh, we are talking of uh, 60,000 uh, new jobs being created uh, in these cities at 100 square feet a person. Uh, let's now move to a tier two city like uh, maybe uh, uh, Ahmedabad, uh, not an Ahmedabad, maybe a Nagpur or a Vishakapatnam. That number drops to uh, three to five lakh uh, square feet, which translates to three to five thousand uh, jobs. So unless we see huge amount of economic activity happening, um, I personally don't see a big impact of uh, smart cities uh, across uh, the country. Amit, Mal, uh, Amit has asked this question. I want to understand why PEs hesitate to invest in uh, smaller projects or will it change with the positive outlook in FDI? Uh, 
most of these funds uh, which have come to india a large uh, sovereign funds like uh, if you look at abu dhabi investment uh, authority uh, is a 700 billion dollar fund uh, uh, canadian pension plan 400 billion abu dhabi investment uh, uh, apg again uh, big uh, hundreds of billions of uh, dollars gic again 400 500 billion dollars so all these guys uh, when they come to india they will not make uh, small investments because uh, their management teams uh, bandwidth uh, would be quite limited uh, they again would have uh, restrictions in their investment thesis not to uh, uh, get into too many uh, projects again because of uh, the management uh, bandwidth uh, today uh, we have seen uh, the smallest size which we have seen uh, some of the funds do investments up to maybe a 75 to 100 crore uh, less than that looks uh, quite tough uh, for them to invest in do you anticipate consolidation uh, within the developer community with bigger players taking over stalled projects of mid size smaller developers samit has asked this question very good question we have seen significant amount of consolidation already happening in 2017 was the first year where we saw consolidation happening many developers uh, have uh, partnered uh, with uh, others the big beneficiaries of this uh, have been people like uh, godrej uh, lnt shapurji uh, mahindra is now uh, getting into the fray so a lot of people uh, wanting to partner tatas wanting to partner with uh, corporate developers uh, in some cities uh, like bangalore we have seen developers like uh, prestige embassy divishri uh, also becoming uh, beneficiaries with uh, many people wanting to uh, partner with them a new trend which you are also seeing is uh, corporates uh, who are not in the real estate space wanting to come in uh, to encash on this uh, opportunity birla estates is uh, another name uh, we see a lot of people wanting to partner with uh, developers like birla like uh, uh, exactly the way uh, today uh, godrej is uh, flooded with uh, proposals to uh, partner with uh, leading to consolidation just like retail assets uh, have been lapped up by funds do you see same trend in hospitality uh, and office space uh, ritesh has asked this question office space has, uh, like i said a uh, lot more than uh, retail uh, that's uh, the most uh, uh, active asset class is office hospitality uh, uh, the biggest challenge is uh, the bid ask uh, spreads uh, sellers uh, want uh, who want to sell and buyers expectation still there is a huge amount of uh, gap Uh, as far as uh, i know there are only a couple of uh, funds today who are looking at uh, investing in the hospitality uh, uh, space but we believe uh, this year towards uh, third fourth quarter this uh, trend could change with uh, more players entering the hospitality space for investments hni investments uh, or vc what would be a better option for a mid sized uh, real estate company in pune this question has been uh, asked by uh, gargi uh, i would uh, uh, again uh, if you're looking for less than uh, 150 uh, crores uh, it would be better to go for uh, uh, from a equity point of view then obviously there's uh, hni investments uh, i mentioned that most of the uh, money from uh, private equity uh, which has come in has gone into commercial with uh, like less than 5% going into uh, residential from an equity point of view uh, but uh, you're looking at uh, debt there are enough uh, players uh, who could come in at any category from 20 crores onwards uh, there's enough players in 2019 we'll have general elections do you see people would like to hold on to their purchase decisions uh, till then this is uh, ankur uh, like i said uh, what's holding on uh, people to uh, massively come and invest in uh, real estate uh, is uh, basically people want to see uh, more uh, stringent uh, uh, implementation of uh, rera and uh, more affordable uh, uh, affordability happening in uh, the industry i think that will uh, drive uh, demand uh, more than uh, election i haven't uh, heard of any buyer say that uh, i'm waiting for elections to uh, get over
what are the major entry barriers that you see in the student housing uh, sector today? Uh, Shika Singh has asked this question. Uh, Shika, the answer to this is I don't see uh, much of entry barriers because uh, there's hardly any players. It's a highly uh, scattered uh, industry. A few thumb rules. Uh, you need to be uh, close to uh, two kilometers away from an educational institution. Uh, please remember that uh, in student housing, uh, most of the colleges uh, in India, except uh, maybe the IITs and IIM, provide for uh, housing, uh, student housing only for the first year students, which means uh, 75 to 80 percent of your student population don't have uh, proper accommodation. So that's uh, the big opportunity. And the really big opportunity that I see is uh, today in the residential uh, yield, uh, which we have uh, seen in uh, the country, uh, is uh, two, two and a half percent. And student housing yields uh, ranging anywhere between uh, 7 to uh, 8 percent. So just with a little bit of uh, value addition of a residential uh, apartment and with proper design, if you can get a yield from 2 to 3 percent move to 7 to 8 percent, definitely there is uh, opportunity on that. With the garments tenure yields hovering around 7.4 percent, where do you see the REIT yields at? If they are listed this year to attract investor interest, uh, Purnima has asked this question. Million dollar question. Uh, I wish uh, I had the answer. Although uh, investment uh, bankers have been talking about six and uh, six and a half uh, percent uh, kind of uh, numbers, we need to uh, wait and uh, wait and watch. Uh, very good question, but I don't have the answer to this question. What is the reason for spiked PE interest in uh, retail assets? Uh, Divya Grover has uh, asked this question. Uh, again, interesting. Uh, uh, Blackstone uh, started pursuing office assets uh, back in 2012. Uh, today, they are the largest uh, owner of office. Uh, uh, with uh, most of the good tradable assets uh, being bought by a few funds, including Blackstone. Not uh, enough tradable uh, uh, assets uh, in the office uh, asset class, but uh, many uh, large uh, developers uh, wanting to hold, uh, even private developers uh, wanting to uh, hold on. Uh, that's the reason, uh, like I said, uh, because of uh, excess uh, capital uh, availability. And there is uh, pressure to look uh, harder to find these uh, funds want to look at uh, retail as an alternative to office. And people want to do the same as what Blackstone did in office in 2012 in retail. And that's uh, the reason we are suddenly seeing demand for uh, retail assets uh, go up. Green building concept will be a next big thing for builders in India. Um, can it decrease stamp duty? Uh, good idea. Mohammed has asked this question. I think the government should listen and uh, try and increase, uh, reduce stamp duty for uh, and subsidies for green buildings. With that, uh, we come to the end of uh, this uh, session. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed giving this uh, one hour overview of what's happening in the Indian uh, investment uh, space and uh, look forward to more such uh, interactions. Thank you uh, to the audience and uh, listeners and I hope uh, the session was uh, helpful. Over to the moderator. Uh, CEO and country head JLL India for the presentation on the topic funding and investments into the real estate sector. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take all the questions due to time constraints. If you have any other questions, please send them at editor at etrealty.com. It was an engaging and insightful talk and hope all the participants have enjoyed the session. The recording of this webinar will be made available on etrealty.com. Thank you everyone for joining us. Goodbye.